There's nothing as powerful as a mother's love, except maybe steel-reinforced concrete. But what happens when that love is twisted into something different? Something much darker. Boy moms. Not to be confused with women who happen to have male children, are mothers who for some reason have decided to make the gender of their child their entire personality. This obsessive behavior towards their sons inhibits good parenting at best, and dips its toes into the Freudian at worst, becoming especially alarming when these women also have daughters who suffer because of this extreme favoritism. While this mother and son dynamic is centuries old, the internet has a beautiful way of allowing weirdos to publicly incriminate themselves, pulling up the logs of their lives to reveal Feel all the delicious, creepy crawlies skittering underneath to millions. And as usual, I invite you to grab a bag of popcorn, drench it in butter, and watch the train wreck with me. You'll be his first kiss, his first love. He's your little boy. He's your little boy. I hated how he said that. <laughs> I thought this video would be a great place to start because it highlights a particular fixation that these toxic boy moms have of being their son's first love and using language that uncomfortably parallels romantic relationships. The weirdness becomes super obvious once you realize these women would never mention being their daughter's first kiss or their daughter's first love, so... What's the difference? Well, according to the comment section underneath this video, having a son is completely different. A transcendental experience that girl birthers simply could never understand and boy moms refuse to explain. Being a boy mom is the best feeling. It's truly falling in love. Ew. I mean, interesting perspective. There's just something different about raising a boy heart can't explain. No, no, please do explain. What, what's so different about it? I and the local authorities are incredibly curious. He is her last true love. Which makes the dad, what? The matchmaker? The ex? Last true love? What are we, what, what are we talking about? I have a little boy and I always thought I wanted girls, but having a baby boy? It's something else. No, it actually literally isn't. There's nothing special about a baby boy versus a baby girl. It's a baby, a collection of fat rolls missing its kneecaps, a default starter human that hasn't even allocated its skill points yet. You haven't even had a girl, so how do you know having a boy is different? I'm gonna have an aneurysm unless we have a sponsor break right now. But before we continue, I'd like to take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Air Up. Using scent-based taste, Air Up water bottles deliver scented air to your mouth as you drink, making drinking water way more interesting so you can stay hydrated and healthy. I've had this Air Up water bottle for about a month now, and I can say without exaggeration that I use it every single day. I'm literally using it while I'm recording this video. I had developed a really bad habit of sitting down to work on videos for hours without making sure I was drinking enough water. And now, filling this bottle is the first step of my workday routine. It's super fun to try all the flavors, but tangerine is by far my absolute favorite. And I was very surprised at how long the flavor pods last before you have to replace them. It's also really easy to take the bottle apart to clean the mouthpiece and straw, unlike other water bottles I've used in the past. As the holiday season approaches, Air Up makes for a perfect gift for that special, perhaps dehydrated, someone in your life. Their wide selection of bottle colors and flavor pods means that the gift of Air Up can be customized to each friend or family member's taste. Air Up will keep your loved ones happy and hydrated all year long, but their holiday bundles that can save you up to 30% off are only here for a limited time. So make sure to get them while you can. But these strange videos aren't just isolated incidents. Entire TikTok trends and audios have been co-opted by boy moms as an opportunity to show off their toxicity. This one's got layers like lasagna. Let's dig in. First off, versions of this cringy trend have been done by parents of both genders, so I'm not gonna be as harsh. 
but I also have to take off points for creativity. There are so many assumptions being made here. First off, that it's the wife's duty by default to do the cooking. These mothers are training their sons to be judgmental food critics, to make sure their spouses can handle the daily responsibility of feeding them as well as mommy did. Maybe your future daughter-in-law can't boil water, but is a wonderful, loving partner. Maybe your son wants to do the cooking, but there's no room for that within these rigid, traditional standards for wives and mothers like this devote their lives to setting the bar out of reach so their sons stay attached to them. There's also the assumption that relying on pre-prepared food is somehow a horrible personal failure for a woman, as if women can't get tired sometimes and just throw something in the microwave. Like, come on, do you think your precious prince is too good for frozen pizza? Thoughty daughter? Hello? You are literally making assumptions about the promiscuity of a woman that you not only haven't met yet, but who is currently, hopefully, still a minor. You're still oh. shaming an imaginary person and getting mad about it. Shall I fetch your pills, milady? There was a wonderful response to this trend with TikTok users recording themselves teaching their sons how to cook for much better reasons. To provide them with basic life skills so they can feed themselves and their future families, as well as destigmatizing cooking as women's work. Of course, I probably don't have to explain to you what this tangling of wires between romantic and motherly affection leads to. Viewing their son's future partners as competition. This is how you get bizarre trends where mothers post themselves lip-syncing love songs to their eight-year-old children. All right, this is that one Olivia Rodrigo song that goes like, she is beautiful, she is kind, she probably gives you butterflies. I know you're happy, but not I can't, okay, uh, the, you know what I'm talking about. This is a song about hoping your ex never finds someone who makes them as happy as you did, which is already kind of weird. I wish I had the memory eraser from Men in Black so I could just wipe myself from the minds of all of my exes. But to sing this song to your son, joking that you hope they are never as happy with a future partner as they are with you, yikes. Yikes, I say! How can you think this way and still claim that you love and want the best for your kid? But this isn't the only track that toxic boy moms have hopped on. Oh my god, more copyrighted music. Okay, uh, please don't be in love with someone else. Please don't. Wow, this is creepy. Once again, Ew. Weird. Because these women have blurred the line between romantic and parental love, they see their son's girlfriends as replacing them and their son's relationships as a breakup. Not only that, but if they've done their job right, their sons will also compare their wives to their mothers. Not in the developmentally normal my parent of the opposite gender informed my expectations for that gender way, but in the... My mommy used to cut the crusts off my sandwiches, why aren't you? way. This is also tied to men being socialized to think of their wives as caregivers rather than equal partners, which blurs the lines between mommy and wife even more. Which, if you're an adult and you want to blur those lines with your also adult wife in the privacy of your own home, that's great, I just don't want to know about it. You're already creating a rivalry with your son's future wives in your head when these boys don't even know there's letters in math yet? Why would you take joy in the idea of isolating your future daughter-in-law from her family during the holidays and preventing your future grandchildren from seeing half of their extended family? But amongst the toxic TikTok boy moms, there is one who has crowned herself queen, and her reign began with this video. I never thought that I would be that toxic boy mom. I love my four kids equally, but that last little boy, <laughs> it just hits different. I don't like that laugh. He hits his sisters, he punches them, I'm like, maybe he's having a hard day. Oh, I see now what she meant by hits different. She meant his hits 
go unpunished. Now, how many hard days is your son allowed to have before he has to stop using his sisters to train for the UFC? If you think siblings don't notice favoritism, you've never had siblings. If my mom split the last piece of cake between the four of us and one of the slices was 0.5% bigger than the others, somebody ended up in a headlock. Your kids will definitely know if you have a favorite and you're gonna raise an emotionally stunted son and very resentful daughters. So when I think about my daughters getting married, I get excited, right? Planning their weddings. When I think about my son's wedding, I wanna cry. Oh, no. <clears throat> this sounds like something you should talk to a therapist about. I'm not licensed to deal with this shit. For a lot of these women, this intense and situationally inappropriate affection that they pour into their sons is a way of seeking fulfillment in areas that they feel that their male partners have failed them. Literally raising a replacement for their boyfriend or husband. And if you think that that's a stretch, just watch the next two videos. And my man, thank you to my man to my man, thank you to my man. Remember all the things that you and I did first and now you're doing them with her? Remember all the things that you and I did first? You got me, got me like this, ah! Freud flipping a fritter in a frying pan on a Friday afternoon. What the hell did I just watch? I mean, way to spell it out for us like it's a goddamn spelling bee. Now, after getting backlash for making these weird videos about her son, the creator did apologize and say that she, I'm just kidding. Um, she actually leaned into it more aggressively just to make people upset. She quickly realized she could turn this toxic boy mom behavior into a rage farm. And she tilled that soil until she got a nice crop of views and angry comments. When it comes to toxic boy moms, these weird jokes and possessive behaviors don't magically go away when their sons grow up. You see, the monster mother-in-law is the final form of the toxic boy mom evolution, the final boss stage, so to speak. And unfortunately, that's probably the only flavorful meal that anyone's ever eaten at your house, Kathy. That's why no one touched your beige-colored casserole at the church potluck last Wednesday. Careful yanking your hair like that before you get in this hypothetical altercation with your daughter-in-law. You might want to preserve what's left. All jokes aside, the toxic boy mom parenting style leads to very severe consequences. Mothers that have emotionally insist, uh, we can't say that word, so I'm just gonna say swiping right at the family function relationship with their sons and put them on a pedestal, create men who are emotionally immature and entitled and who will end up being lazy, if not outright abusive partners. He hits his sisters. He punches them. I think what's so tragic about the toxic boy mom is that there's really only two endings for her. Option one, she poisons all of her son's romantic relationships. Or option two, he sets boundaries with her and starts cutting her out of his life. But we're not done yet. Don't worry. <laughs> I've saved the worst for last. She made a sweaty thirst trap for her son. Woo! 